excellent. You know, I didn't quite set up everything that I needed. And there we go. We're good. We are good. Some days are like that. Have you noticed that some days go so smoothly and everything sets up perfectly? And then the next time you go to do something, the exact same thing, you maybe just forget something that was important and oh, well, that's life, right? That's life. Welcome. I'm so glad you're with me. We'll stop with the driveling and get on with why you're here. We are going to do some iridology nervous system case studies today. So I hope you're as excited as I am. I love this stuff. I absolutely love iridology. I love teaching iridology. I love holistic health. I love all of this. And I'm just so glad you're with me today. We're only going to be together for a short while. I've blocked off 90 minutes, so I hope you have too, because we will probably need the full 90 minutes to do this. Regardless of what your specialty is, I just am so excited that you're here and I know you are going to learn things that you can use with your clients. And so that's very exciting. I've also know, learned over my years in this industry, and I've been in this industry for nearly 40 years now, that holistic practitioners who are really good at their jobs actually don't stop learning, right? They keep learning. They keep learning new things. They keep adding on to what they already know. They, it's really important that you keep doing that. I'm so glad you're here because that tells me that you are in that group of people who continues to learn and who wants to have the most up-to-date, the most current, the most beneficial information to use with your clientele. We're a small group today as we usually are in these classes and that's great because it means that there's a little time for some interaction probably. But I would like to do a little poll to understand a little bit more about who you are and what your background is so that I can tweak this a little bit on the fly. So I'm going to launch a little poll here and Hopefully you're seeing that on your screen. There you go. And with this little poll, if you would just check off as many things that are on there as apply to you, what is your current training in holistic health? Okay, and so if, if uh, that's great, okay. And do you have, um, and because we are a small group, oh, you've all voted, yes, thank you, appreciate that. Awesome, so we've got some with nutrition and some with not much yet just starting out, so great. I will really make this applicable for our nutrition people and for those of you who are just starting out, I promise I'm not gonna be talking way up here. I'm, I like to teach in plain English because that's the way we learn the best, right? Excellent. Okay, so let's kind of get started here. Welcome. Hello. I'm glad you're with me. And as we launch into this, I just want to talk about some of the challenges that you might be facing, whether you're actually practicing now, or perhaps you, um, you're just starting out and you're in school and you're learning new things. And so there's some things that you want to know as you start this. The first thing is that as practitioners, we know a lot. And if you're a student, you're learning a lot. And if you're a student, your head's probably swimming and you're thinking, oh my goodness, where do I start? As experienced practitioners, we often have that same problem. We don't know exactly where to start when we're making our therapeutic recommendations. And that leads to a lot of other challenges. One of those is that it's very normal for us as practitioners to see our client, give them a little bit of homework, send them away. And in between when we send them away and when they come back, we spend often two or three or four hours doing research, creating a program, beautiful program, an all encompassing program to give to your client the next time you see your client, right? We all do this. The problem with this is unless you're charging about $400 for that first face-to-face -face appointment, you're not getting paid for the time that you spend doing research. Now, you know, we're, we're givers, right? And that creates a problem for us because we spend a lot of time giving. We've got excellent training under our belts and that is fabulous, but we weren't really taught how to integrate the nutrition and integrate the iridology and 
integrate the herbology and integrate everything we know into one neat little pile. Many years ago, I had an iridology student who was a naturopath and she had been certified by another iridology instructor some years private previously, rather like about eight years before I met her, she'd been certified and she bought an expensive iridology camera. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes as well. When she came to me, she was really discouraged, really just fed up with this whole iridology thing. She had done that class, spent the money on the class, spent the money on a camera. And that's not a cheap investment. And the camera had sat in the corner of her office, still in its original packaging all those years because she had not been taught how to integrate the iridology into what she was already doing. And she just couldn't figure out how to make this work. So she came to me, she'd attended a few of these little free webinars that I do. And she, she came to those and then she said, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet here. I'm going to pay for one more iridology class. And I felt very honored that she chose me for that last one. After our second class, just the second class, she emailed me and she said, I've opened my camera. I've set it up. I've started taking pictures. This makes sense. I already see what I missed in the first classes that I took. I see how to integrate that. Now, when you know how to do that, what it's going to do is it's going to help you to not necessarily to, not, to cut out this unpaid homework time that we all have done at one point or another. Okay, we just we just need to see how to do this. We also have the challenge that when we create these great big massive programs, we've gone and we've done all this research and we've created this be all and end all program, that it's a huge program. It's every little thing that our clients should do, shouldn't do, uh, what should they eat, what supplements do they need, what food should they avoid, what lifestyle changes do they need to make. And when we give that to our client in one go, it's overwhelming. It's massively overwhelming and they can't do it. And I know that for a fact because of the number of people who have come back to me, they've come in for one or two appointments and then they disappear for a long time. And then they come back and they go, I just couldn't do it. But I thought I'd give it another try now. Yikes, my fault, mea culpa, right? My fault, not good. I've even um, in recent years designed programs where it was two or three small changes like drink more water, reduce your coffee by half and eat a salad every day. And I've had people contact me and go, I can't do that. It's too much. Can we make this easier? And so it really underscores the fact that these massive, huge programs that we often develop are way out of line for what our clients can do. Does any of this sound like I've been watching you? Are you um, bamboozled in your own mind about where to start when making recommendations? Do you spend your own time doing the research, developing the programs? And then do you overwhelm your clients? If you are guilty of any of those things, I want you to click that little raise hand icon that's on your screen, that's in your little drop down menu. Yeah? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, you know what? I only know this to be the truth because I've been there myself. You should have seen the programs I developed for my clients when I started in this industry nearly 40 years ago. Oh my goodness, how any of them ever, ever decided to stay with me and come back again is beyond me because did I ever fire hose them? Don't do that anymore. And it's not worthwhile. But I also know this because I've interviewed a lot of nutritionists and herbalists and other holistic practitioners like you. And just about every one of them have been there too. And so if you are there now, you don't need to stay there. We can give you back that couple of hours that you're spending developing programs. We can help you to stop overwhelming your clients so that they can be really successful on each appointment, you give them that the homework they need for that appointment, they go away for two or three or four weeks, however you schedule your follow-ups, and they come back and they have been massively successful. And so they want to keep working with you because you get them, you understand them. What does that do for your business? 
you know, they say it's more expensive to find a new client than it is to keep a client. So if you can keep a client and have them come back for four or five or six appointments, get their real core structure down in that length of time, and then have them back for follow-ups every three to six or nine months after that, you've generated a business that is self-perpetuating, where your clients trust you, they know you, and they know that you have their best interest at heart because you are going at a speed they can do. And they love being success successful. When we're not successful, we don't want to go back. You know, those clients of mine that came back after a long time said, yeah, you know, I didn't want to tell you that I couldn't do it all. Oh, man fail on my part, right? That's not how it should ever be. It should always be that a client comes back and goes, says, you know, I was successful like 80% of the time. And I tell my clients up front, I don't expect you to be perfect. I expect you to be darn good. So they can decide what darn good looks like. And when they come back and tell me they've been darn good and I have them quantified, I can go, way to go. That is fabulous. That's a great thing. We can build on that. That is awesome. Okay, we are going to close that poll since we had everybody weigh in on it. And okay, that should be giving me a new screen now, and it's not. I love it when technology works. It's even better when I understand how it works. And I'm not sure why. Are you still seeing, if you're still seeing the poll on your screen, would you raise your hand? There you go. It just changed perfect. It's slow motion today. Okay, so who am I and what gives me the right to share this information with you? Well, I've been a holistic health coach since 1981, master herbalist since 83, nutritional consulting practitioner since 94, clinical nutritional practitioner since 2016. Certified iridologist since 93 and became a certified comprehensive iridology instructor in 2016. I was teaching iridology long before I became a certified instructor. Teacher of wellness professional since 85. That is back when home phones still had cords on them, right? The internet didn't really exist. We're talking ancient history. I am also the wife of one, the mom of seven, and the grandma of seven. And of course, that last line is my proudest set of accomplishments, although I love my work. So iridology can help you eliminate your intake forms except for your waiver release form. Seriously, waiver release forms are a waste, or waiver forms are necessary. Intake forms are a waste of time. I've had some people tell me that they have a 20-page intake form. I wouldn't. I just simply wouldn't. If a practitioner gave that to me, I'd go cancel my appointment. I'm out of here. I want someone who's going to talk to me. You know, this is a problem that we have even with the medical world, right? You go in to see a, a medical doctor, and now they're all on computer, of course. And so they go in, and they might have their chair angled slightly towards you, but they're really looking at the computer to look at what your lab tests are, to rem remind them of your name, your phone number, you know, how tall you are, what problems you talked about last time. And so they don't have that eye-to-eye -eye rapport that we need to have. When you do iridology, you will learn how to use it as your intake form. And that means that you're creating deep rapport from the moment you start the consultation process instead of either looking down at a paper form or looking at a computer screen. We need that eye-to-eye -eye contact, not just when we're looking at their eyes to do iridology, but we need you know, that eye-to-eye that -eye contact, right? That's how we develop rapport. Iridology will help you do a core assessment in less than five minutes. Know the right questions to ask, prioritize what needs to be dealt with first, and create a therapeutic priorities list for future consultations. Now, we combine what we see in the eyes with what our client has said, because of course, when they first come in and you do, hi, hello, how are you? And then you ask, no, really, how are you? I need to know why you're here. What can I help you with? Then that, their little shopping list needs to combine with what we see in the eyes and we need to mesh those together so our clients know we have heard them, right? We need to look for markers that corroborate with the kinds of things they've, they've mentioned they want help with and that will help us to understand them better. 
we will eliminate your unpaid homework time. No more of this two and three and four hours doing research, creating these massive, beautiful reports that only work in school. They don't work in practice. And by doing that, we will stop overwhelming clients, which is so important. How does that sound? Does that sound too good to be true? If you think that sounds too good to be true, raise your hand. As in, click that hand icon, because I can't see it if you raise your hand in front of your camera. Uh, Kaylee, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, some of you are agreeing with me that it sounds great. Too good to be true, but it's not too good to be true, because we're going to demonstrate how to do this. So, you know, at the beginning of this, um, I talked about a, a practitioner who was using a 20 page intake form. Well, I spoke with another practitioner who was actually using a three page intake form. And here's one of the other challenges she ran into is she's a giver. That client that she was working with, two things. Number one, had booked one hour. And my, my student, who she had just started being my student when this happened, was with that client for three hours. How many hours do you think she got paid for? And I'm not a money grubber, but our time is valuable, right? And I want you to type it into your chat con your chat box. She booked one hour, she spent three hours. How many hours do you think she charged her client for? We'll let you do your lightning fingers thing and type in your answer. Yeah, Kaylee, you're right. She got paid for one hour. Now, I'm going to ask you again, how many of you are guilty as charged? You booked one, you even spent three, two or three face to face with your client, not including your homework time. Have you done that? Yeah, you have, haven't you? Yeah, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. And so this is something that we need to avoid. We are givers. And the more we give free, the less valued our work is. Right. Generally, if we are given something for free, we often don't value it as much as if we had to pay for it. So I'm not money grubbing here. I'm simply stating the fact that it is a universal truth that if we have to make an investment that is commensurate with the, the benefit we are receiving, we value it more. We need to value ourselves more as practitioners so that we can can share that value accurately with our clients. Now, this same student had an intake form that was only three pages long. That's not bad as far as intake forms go, right? The client she was working with had arthritic hands and commented at the end of the first page, this hurts my hands. Now, if my student had been far enough along in the process to actually do iridology as the intake, the only things that client would have needed to have filled out were name, address, phone number. I know you're not a doctor. You can't diagnose and prescribe signature. You know, it would have taken her three minutes, no pain involved. So that's where iridology absolutely comes in. Let's do our first case here. Do our first case here. This is a male, 24 years old. He's 30 pounds overweight. He has a high refined carbohydrate diet. He does not drink alcohol, but he drinks a lot of soda. I don't know if you're in Canada or in the US, I'll try to speak in both languages here. Believe it or not, we speak different languages. And so he drinks two liters of soda, which is roughly equal to two quarts a day. Any of you see a problem with that? Yeah, right? He's had depression and insomnia for a about five years. Does that strike you as being awfully young? And he's been on antidepressants for about five years. Okay, so these are his eyes. We describe these eyes because they are brown as being hematogenic, hematogenic. What we know about hematogenic eyes when we see this brown, these beautiful brown eyes is that brown always talks about liver and or blood disorders. And so the question becomes, um, besides the fact that he's got brown and that tells us we need to ask liver questions, then we need to ask him, do you have liver questions? But we need to know behind that, that in traditional Chinese medicine, 
depression comes through the liver. So if the liver's not happy, there will probably be depression. Okay, and we know also through TCM, we know a few other things, we'll get there in a moment. So I'm gonna get you really typing in answers here and interact with me on this, play with me in the sandbox, we'll have way more fun. And I wanna know if, what kinds of symptoms beyond depression do you look for if you suspect someone has a liver issue? What kind of symptoms do you look for or do you ask about if you suspect someone has a problem with their liver? And again, get your lightning fingers going. Ooh, Elizabeth, I like this. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, Elizabeth says suppressed anger and aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. Kaylee says skin and anger. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things that we would be asking for, asking about skin issues. Absolutely. You might want to ask about being jaundiced. We're going to talk about that in a minute or two with another case. You might ask about anger, bitterness, resentment. Do they store that? Because that comes through the liver as well. So if you've asked those questions and you've gotten answers back, maybe this person does have an anger issue. Maybe they really do a good job of holding a grudge and keeping score. And you know that they are working with depression. They come in and said, I suffer with depression. I'm on meds for it. What are some recommendations, some dietary or lifestyle or herbal, if you know your herbs, recommendations that you would consider making to this client? Again, let's have you get your lightning fingers going. And point form is great. Ooh, Kaylee, good suggestions. Milk thistle and dandelion. Those are both wonderful liver herbs. Well done, well done. Anything else? Anyone have anything else to contribute? While you're typing, I'm going to move forward. And if I see more answers come in, I will certainly bounce back to them. Eat more leafy greens. Leafy greens are liver food, complete and total liver food. And we need to get rid of those refined carbohydrates, especially that fizzy soda. It's got to go. It's not helping anything. It's depleting. B vitamins, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium, and we need all of those to help us feed the liver and the adrenals to keep the depression out of the picture, right? So those are some key things we need to do. Now, this doesn't mean everybody with brown eyes has depression. It means everybody with brown eyes is prone to liver imbalances, and depending on how they're taking care of the liver will determine whether or not they have depression. So he also has contraction furrows. Contraction furrows are these lines that come around like this. I call them target rings. Target rings, that's my highly technical term. Don't use that on a test. Contraction furrows. These tell us that he probably doesn't handle stress all that well. He spends a lot of his time in the sympathetic nervous system response zone. So fight or flight or freeze, right? He's ready for the next crisis right now. So we need to then ask questions. How do you handle stress? What does your body do when you're under stress, right? Are there any other questions that you would ask someone if you felt they were always just on that edge of running from the bear? There could be a lot of questions, but I'd like you to, again, take that minute and go ahead and uh, type that in for me. while I turn the ringer off on my phone that I should have turned off before we started. There we go, better. Any ideas? You know, some of the, oh, do you consume stimulants? Oh, good question. Do you consume stimulants? Yeah, because that certainly would make this worse, wouldn't it? Good one, Kaylee. And Elizabeth says, how are they sleeping, caffeine, smoking? So again, we've got the stimulants and we want to know how it affects sleeping. That's great. Remember on our initial profile of this fellow, he said 
insomnia and depression. So that is right on Elizabeth, well done. So what kinds of things would you recommend then? So we've seen this marker in the eye that says he's more prone to stress. He said, yeah, he lives on that edge. He's always waiting for that next bomb to go off. What kinds of dietary supplemental lifestyle things would you suggest for him? Increases water intake. Yeah, I love that. You know why I love that, Nicole, is because if we can get him to increase his water intake, and I think this is what you were thinking, very clever, by the way. If we can increase the water, it will naturally force him to probably decrease the soda intake, and that is a really good positive thing. I like to work that way, too, where rather than just saying, "I take this away, take this away, take this away, I'll have them work on increasing something that will replace what needs to disappear. And it's a really positive way to avoid having your clients feel like there's no joy in life anymore, right? Excellent. Uh, stress management techniques, yeah, yoga and meditation, brilliant. Magnesium, water, exercise, and grounding. Oh, good suggestions all, well done. So on that diet level, again, just building on everything you've suggested, Eat more leafy greens. Again, feed the liver. Feed the liver and uh, eliminate the refined carbs. So try to replace a lot of the refined carb with some leafy greens and maybe even with a little more protein, some good clean protein. B vitamins, probably methylated. We often see issues with depression uh, with people who do not methylate their bees probably. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this with another case the importance of methylation, vitamin C, calcium, magnesium, all good basic suggestions here. And then it was mentioned earlier to ask about how well do you sleep because these contraction furrows again put this person into that sympathetic mode a lot. And when you're living at that edge of waiting for the next bomb to go off, sleep is often poor. So we'd want to know what is your usual sleep pattern? So we're assuming he's given us answers that are kind of erratic and all over the place. Or even if he didn't, what are your favorite things to recommend to help people sleep better? What are your favorite things to recommend to help people sleep better? While you're typing that in, yeah, I don't know where you live, but we've just gone through that that nasty one-hour time change that takes everybody that I know of, well, yeah, pretty much everybody, a good week or so to adjust to that one-hour difference. And then where I live, it makes a huge difference to the amount of sunlight we have at nighttime. As we get into summer, it won't even be dark here until 11 p.m., and then the sun is coming up easily by 3.30 or 4 in the morning. And so that means that we've got so little dark time that it's, it really messes up sleep. But even now where it's lighter in the evenings, it, it's starting to mess up people's sleep patterns. All right, so here we've got some great suggestion coming in. Ooh, yeah, awesome. Essential oils, yeah. Great. Choose essential oils that will help you to relax. Foot and body massage. Walking. Brilliant. Set up a reasonable sleep schedule. Oh, I love that one, Nicole. Get on track. Go to bed at the same time. Get up at the same time. Well done. Epsom salt baths. Very relaxing. And lavender essential oil. Brilliant. Good suggestions. Well done. Thank you for that. So I suggested also daily walks in the sunshine. So especially when the sun is brightest, that begins to set up the serotonin melatonin cycle for us, right? And serotonin is the feel awake but calm neurotransmitter. Then in the evening when we start to dim the lights and turn off the computer screens and our phone screens and our tablet screens one to two hours before we go to bed, that allows the serotonin to begin converting over to melatonin. 
and the melatonin is what helps us sleep. Again, the regular sleep and wake times, that was great. Tryptophan found in poultry will often help with sleep again because tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin, which is the precursor to melatonin. And sleep hygiene with the screen time. We're seeing so many problems now with people watching television with the blue light that that emits through your computer screens or your phones or your tablets and how that really messes up the whole sleep cycle thing. It's a huge problem in schools now with so many children, whether they're young or adolescent or teenagers, having electronic devices for, and with them texting friends and messaging friends all through the night. We're finding some real problems with sleep. All right, so with all of this, you're looking at these pictures and you're going, holy Hannah, how do you get photos like that? Well, I'm gonna show you how you get photos. We need to talk about what kind of equipment you need to do iridology. And from there, uh, we want to just, um, want to be aware of some things. So this is the, the piece de resistance. This is the equipment that, yeah, Whoa, you got this, you can really do iridology, right? This is only $5,000 worth. As a new iridologist, I'm telling you, do not do this. Do not go there. Do not spend this kind of money on this kind of equipment until you know you love iridology. This is where the rest of us start. We start with a good pen light that has a good white light and a magnifying device. This is an 8X, an eight power jeweler's loop. This whole setup will probably cost you 35 or $40. Yeah, much more affordable, right? This is another piece that I like my students to have. I actually like them to have both of these, a magnifier that has light built in, as well as a handheld with a separate light because they serve different, different purposes. I purchased this one off Amazon. It has three interchangeable magnifying powers. I think it's a 2x, a 5x, and a 10x. And the reason we want both of these is that this one you have no control over where the light is shining. And as we look at eyes, we're going to see that there are different features that we're going to look at in the eyes. And sometimes we want to move the light in relation to where our magnifier is focusing so that we can cast shadows and see different features pop. Okay, so you really want both. 75 or 80 bucks maximum. Look on Amazon, see what you can find. Go to a stamp collecting shop. They would have this kind of equipment as well. Walmart here in Canada sells this too. So inexpensive, get started with easy stuff. Don't think you need this kind of equipment right off the bat because you really, really don't. Steven, starting with this basic equipment, you can learn iridology really well. And when you understand the iris and the sclera, because it's good to know what the white of the eye is telling you, you can integrate all of your nutrition knowledge. We've had some great suggestions already as we've done our first case today. You can integrate all of your herbal knowledge. Again, we've had great recommendations there. You can integrate your lifestyle knowledge. We've talked about walks and sleep patterns and meditation and yoga and massage. Brilliant suggestions. You can prioritize which pieces of education and homework to share with your clients today in their next session and the session after that. I call that creating a prioritized therapeutic sequence because we can't do everything all at once and we need to, with what our clients tell us and with iridology, ascertain what are the most important things to do first. Can we trace this problem back to a source and can we work on that source first? And it might take a few months to really work on that source, but if we've outlined, this is our starting point, this is our next, this is our next, this is our next, this is our next, we've actually outlined five appointments worth of content and done it in a way where we will no longer overwhelm our clients. And that's an important thing. That allows us again to not overwhelm them, to create the bite-sized doable pieces of homework for our clients in our client sessions. Now, I gotta tell you, I, I love to work out. And I've worked with some different personal trainers and I've worked with some different physiotherapists. I went to one physiotherapist for an injury, a sport injury that I had. 
her list of homework that she gave me took me over an hour every night to do. Now, I really wanted to heal this injury. And I was willing to do it, but as soon as that injury was healed, I dropped that like a hot cake. Right? I wanted to be doing other things than that, that are like going for my regular workouts, right? Then I came across another physiotherapist when I had a different injury. And she gave me like four exercises. That was it. It was a similar injury to the first, but it was on the other side of the body. Four exercises. I could do them in 10 minutes or less. I still do those exercises to this day as a form of prevention. And it has been years, right? And so when we do those bite-sized doable pieces of homework for our client, it makes it easier for them to be successful and to continue with it for the rest of their life. And we gradually, as, as things become habit, we can add new pieces of homework. Again, dual, dual, doable pieces to help them create that healthy lifestyle that they will benefit from. So, so important. So integrating iridology with what you already do in your practice will help you get rid of your lengthy intake forms. You only need a waiver release form. Know exactly which problem to address first and what, to, what the best recommendations are. You need to distill it down to the essence, significantly reduce, preferably eliminate doing research or program design time outside of your client time. Now, sometimes we get a client who has a problem that we don't know anything about, right? That's That happens, right? Perfectly fine to do research on that. Absolutely. To learn more about the condition. Absolutely. To design an independent and individualized program wrong answer, right? Understand the problem, but don't spend your own time creating the solutions for it. Understanding how to integrate iridology will help you to stop overwhelming your clients with too much information while encouraging them to become long-term repeat clients. You know, even when you've done five or six sessions and then you're down to maintenance sessions, a lot of clients will fall away. They will, they're doing well, they drift off, they're doing their own thing, they really don't need you to hold their hand anymore, and they may stop coming in. That's okay, because if you've done your job properly, they will remember you. Okay, over the last 35 years in business, I have had my business located in five different places. Back when I started with that, the phone number would change every time I moved. That was before cell phones and it was before portable landline numbers, right? And I've actually even recently, I've been in my current location for about 16 years in my home. Um, I've recently had no fewer than three clients come back to me who I haven't seen for 20 years. But because we did so well, they remembered my name and my company name. They were able to find me online and they came back to me, right? Because I didn't overwhelm them because I guided them through the process and they got results. They knew we could do it again on a new problem. And of course, when you do this, you're going to look really smart, even if you feel insecure, because using iridology, you're going to ask your clients only questions that are relevant to them. This is where the intake forms are not great because they ask those broad questions where you're really fishing for information rather than helping you to laser in on things that are important to your client right now. Let's do another set of eyes. It's a female, age 58. She's on target for her weight. You know, she'd like to lose five pounds, but that's most women, right? She's got a really good diet. She loves vegetables. She loves fresh leafy stuff. And so she's eating a lot of that every day striving to get adequate protein. If there was a weak link for her, it would be her protein intake. Active lifestyle. She likes to work out a lot. Some days she knows her body needs a rest, so she'll go for a one hour walk. But otherwise, she likes to run, swim, bike, yes, call that triathlon, lift weights, that kind of stuff. She has a history of depression. And we're going to learn more about that on her in just a moment. And she controls it with diet and exercise, so important. She does not drink coffee, tea, or alcohol. 
but she has restless leg syndrome. Now the restless leg syndrome, how many of you are familiar with RLS? If you've heard of it, or uh, raise your hand if you would. Yeah? Okay. Restless leg syndrome, for those of you who maybe haven't heard of it or worked with it before, thank you very much for weighing in on that, is a neurological disorder where the body jerks uncontrollably. And it's usually worse when the person is at rest. Often it's in the legs. And so as they're trying to go to sleep, their legs will start just almost rhythmically twitching, which keeps them from falling asleep or it disturbs their sleep. It can include any body part, though it can be arms. This client, I'll tell you quite a bit about her story. Um, at one stage in this, she had it in her jaw so that in the middle of the night, she'd snap her jaw shut and she was breaking teeth. That's how forceful the, the, these twitches were with her. It was really, really scary. When she was at the depth of her depression, uh, of, uh, I shouldn't say her depression, no one wants to own that. When she was in the depth of depression about 15 or 16 years ago, she had been trying to deal with it totally naturally and, and hadn't been doing a very good job on her own. She really needed an outside source of information, someone to, that could see the forest for the trees, right? And so uh, she opted to go to the doctor. The doctor tried her on antidepressants and, and she was on antidepressants for about 10 or 12 weeks. And in that space of time, the restless leg syndrome got so bad that she couldn't sleep at all. She would try to sleep sitting up on the couch with her arms wrapped around her knees, like sitting in a fetal position. And as long as she kept her knees wrapped tightly, she could doze. But as soon as she started to nod off and her arms relaxed, her legs would start twitching and she would wake up. So she was doing a lot of 36 hour days and the other days were lousy sleep. And she was becoming suicidal with this because of the lack of sleep. So she finally quit the meds cold turkey. But even now, after all of these years, as a residual side effect, she still has restless leg syndrome, although she is controlling it fairly well. And she controls the, the depression totally naturally as well now, too. Um, the doctors have some pretty heavy meds they can use, and she had had enough with the meds. She was not going to go that direction again. So... We're going to go back to something we learned with our first eye, that hematogenic eye. This is considered to be a lymphatic eye, which means it has that blue base. Blue-based eyes are lymphatic. But notice she's got brown and rusty brown spots in her eyes. Whether the eye is completely brown or whether it just has rusty spots in it, that brown means the same thing. So we need to ask, how's your liver? How's your liver? What kinds of symptoms? We've talked about this anger, aggression, we might see skin issues. When I asked her how her liver was or did she know if there were any liver issues, she said, Yep, she has a condition called Gilbert syndrome. Or some people that are not don't have a French background would call it Gilbert syndrome. So an enzyme deficiency in the liver that prevents her from properly processing her bilirubin. So one of the side effects is that is that she always has a slight bit of jaundice, okay? Um, because of that, she also should not fast and she should not go on liquid only diets. She needs solid food to help her with the bilirubin levels, right? She needs sleep because sleep helps and she needs sunshine because if you're familiar with newborn babies that are jaundiced, they put them under the billy lights, which are full spectrum lights. So anyone who's got this kind of liver disorder does well to be outside in the sunshine for a while every day, getting that natural full spectrum light to help them conjugate their bilirubin. So knowing those things about her liver and that she struggles a little bit with her bilirubin levels, are there any other suggestions you would consider making to her? Any other suggestions you would consider making for her? Give you just a minute to type that in. I love your suggestions. You're just you're doing so sharp today. So sharp. Love it, love it, love it. And thank you for playing with me in the sandbox. Elizabeth says she would do magnesium. Good suggestion. Magnesium is, according to recent research, the most deficient mineral in the North American diet. Yeah. So if you do hair mineral analysis, you will find 
that virtually all of your clients will be magnesium deficient. Is there anything else that you would be wanting to recommend for her? And going back to some of the ones we've already done, I would repeat the leafy greens. She loves that. She just gobbles that up. Her family teases her about it because she says a, a salad is dinner plate size, stacked three inches tall, and that's a minimum salad. You know, I've, I've, um, she says that she makes a huge salad for supper time and she says to her family, okay, you guys all take what you want. And then whatever's left in the family salad bowl, she takes that and that's her salad for that meal. Right. And she makes it big enough that there's going to be a lot for her. Okay. We talked about blessed or, uh, milk thistle rather. We talked about dandelion. Those are great. Burdock is another fabulous herb for this. Blessed thistle is a lovely liver herb as well right? The magnesium is great for relaxing and for that neurotransmitter uh, settling them down. And so that's an important thing to do as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention when we talked about her history is she likes her sweets a little bit, not a lot, but she likes to have a little piece of cheesecake about once every once or twice a week. That's her cheat. She doesn't do pop, Right. She doesn't do white sugar, white flour. She doesn't do stuff like that. But that little piece of cheesecake once or twice a week is just what she needs to be happy. So as long as she keeps it down to that, we're OK. And she does her leafy greens, of course. Now, notice here we have contraction furrows again. So I want to just point some things out. These are actually not contraction furrows right here. These are just shadowing from the lighting system in this camera. When we look, though, we can see there are contraction furrows here. Are you seeing these, these little creases in the eye? We have some down here, and these are going to be very important as we talk about RLS. We see there's some suggested contraction furrows here between the bands of pigment. right? And ditto over here, we've got a few little contraction furrows. So we asked, how do you handle stress? What does your body do when it's under stress? And so her answers were, she gets into a lot of problem with that upper shoulder neck tension. That's where she really feels it. And if it's really bad, it goes to her gut and she'll get diarrhea. So as we understand that, we understand that you know, if we're going to recommend magnesium, we probably need to, and she does probably does need magnesium. I'm not debating that at all. But we probably need to go magnesium bisglycinate because it has less of a bowel response than any of the other magnesiums do. So we want to be aware of that as we're working with her to make sure we don't give her diarrhea, right? So eat more leafy greens, probably not hugely possible for her, but if she wasn't eating them already, we would get her doing that. Eliminate the re refined uh, carbs. B vitamins, does she need them methylated? Now, if she's eating a lot of leafy greens, she's probably getting naturally methylated B vitamins. Um, and we're going to talk more about methylated Bs in one of our uh, the next case studies we look at today. We also want to look at vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. So we need things that are supporting her nervous system, that are building up her resilience, because that will also help her to ward off depression, and it will help her with the restless leg syndrome. She's already walking. She's already physically active. She's already getting sunshine. So those are all really good things. Now, I mentioned that the fact that these contraction furrows right here are going to be important in just a minute. That's coming up right now. When you look at this eye, can you see that right here, the fibers are a little more separated and it's a little more shaded in that area? If you can see that, raise your hand. See that the fibers here are a little more separated and it's a little more shaded. Thank you. We call this rarefaction or rarefication. And so it means a little less integrity in that area. This is her right eye. Her nose is here. It's like I'm sitting across the table looking at her. This is her right eye. This is in the leg zone. This is her right leg. Hmm. Genetically, something not happy with this right leg. When these contraction furrows end at that rarefaction, where they end is where we are going to see 
the biggest trouble. And that's exactly what we see. Her right leg is the most active when it comes to RLS. Okay, so we just need to be aware of that. And so we need to then ask, what can we do about it? What are some things that we need to do to support her with this? Now, um, aside from it being having that neurological link, a lot of medical doctors will recommend GABA as um, a therapy for RLS. Are you aware of any of the other back pieces to what causes L RLS? Do you know any of them? If you do, let's have you type them in. And if you're typing something in, raise your hand so I know you're busy typing. Okay, so this is new territory. All right, there's been a lot of study done on this and one of the key things that is often there when someone has RLS is they have low ferritin. Low ferritin. Ferritin is the enzyme, enzyme that transports your stored iron out of storage and into the blood cells, right? So when we looked at her lab work, yeah, her ferritin was a low normal, low normal. So that was one of our other recommendations was to build her iron levels. So we got her using organic natural sources of iron, herbal iron supplements. And as we've got that building, we're seeing even less RLS. And as we watch and send her to her doctor to get her lab test done, and we see that the ferritin has built, is building, we're seeing good results with the RLS. Now, something she's gonna have to keep up for the rest of her life, right? That, the leafy greens, the sunshine, all of those things that can help with RLS, we need to work with that. Now, in case you ever have to work with RLS, here's some other things that have been found helpful for it. Compression sleeves, so you can buy compression sleeves for different body parts. You can buy them just for the calf, just for the thigh, just for the arm, right? You can buy compression. Because RLS is a neurological problem, and ask anyone who's got it, and they can, when they're having an episode, they can literally put a finger on it and say, this is the exact spot that is activating it. They can feel that tension building until that muscle twitches and fires off and that relieves it, and then that muscle will start to build again, and it's all because the nerve feed is saying, get ready to do this, right? Irritate, 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 release. When we can constantly stimulate that, that point just a little bit with compression, it often subdues that other thing that's going on. Another thing that works well, I like the Nature Sunshine product line, so I use recommend the Typhoon Massage Lotion. And I will have them slather it on thick as anything. And just that hot, cold, you know, that icy hot sensation often does enough nerve stimulation as well to release the tension and let them fall asleep and calm things down for the night. So I will often, again, suggest they increase their iron and I'll have them get lab tests. I'll send them to their doctor, get lab tests, find out what the ferritin is, their hemoglobin, their serum iron, so that we know what do we need to do here? Can we build the iron? Are we throwing them into dangerous levels on their hemoglobin? We just need to moderate that a little bit. We have the Nervine Herbs. Again, with Nature Sunshine, I love the 8 formula and the STRJ for this. And we add the Omega-3s. And all of those things help with depression as well, which is a good thing. All right. Are we good so far? Yeah? If this is great, raise your hand. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Fabulous. So I do want to, before we do another case study, let you know that we have another round of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology coming up. It actually starts on May 31st, giving you some lead time here to, to organize yourselves to participate with it. Registration opens two weeks from today, two weeks from today on April 3rd in my next free webinar. And on that date, I will be offering some super early bird uh, perks, some bonuses that will be only available for a few days. And you need to know with this that I keep my classes small, no more than 10 students per class. That's my upper limit when we, if we hit 10, they're put on a wait list or I start another section, right? So only 10 students per class, lots of time for one-on-one -on -one interaction, 
lots of one-on-one -on -one support. Classes will be Thursday, so May 31st is a Thursday, they, and there will be an 11 a.m. group and a 5 p.m. group, and you get to choose whether you want morning or evening, but you don't get to bounce back and forth between them. What would you learn in a class like this? Well, you're going to learn how to create your, your programs right in your sessions and eliminate your unpaid homework time. Just like we've been doing in these cases, that's exactly the process we go through when we're doing iridology in a session. We look at the eyes, we make that list of five or six or seven markers, we ask questions about those markers and particularly work to tie them into what the client wanted help with. And as we get the client's answers, then we distill down, we make lists of recommendations that we would consider just like we did today. And then we choose what are the two or three most important recommendations we can make? What are the two or three that are going to help our clients see results quickly so they'll want to come back and get more? So you're going to learn how to do that. Learn how to do a base assessment in five minutes or less without lengthy intake paperwork. Learn how to ask only questions that are relevant to your client's needs. Learn how to prioritize the problems your clients need help with. You'll learn how to connect what you know about nutrition and or herbology with what you discover using dynamic iridology. And you've already been doing that today. You've been tying in what you know with what we're seeing. Learn how to do a deeper assessment for more direction and understanding of your client's needs when it's needed. It's often not needed. But if it is, you'll learn how to do that. You will specifically learn beginning to intermediate iridology. Intermediate iridology gives you a super solid foundation to help you help everybody you meet. You will learn sclerology, and both the iridology and the sclerology are taught at a level to prepare you for the International Iridology Practitioners Association certification exam if you choose to certify, there are additional fees for that exam that are payable to IFA. You will learn basic nutrition and basic herbology as they relate to iridology. But you need to know, I'm not actually teaching iridology, or I'm, I'm teaching iridology, sorry. I'm not teaching nutrition. I'm not teaching herbology. You've seen how we tie it in and how I teach that little bit about it. But this is not going to be a nutrition program per se. All right. And, but again, we need to learn how to integrate that because otherwise having, a stand, have, having all these standalone modalities does you no good. Here's another case we want to do. This is a female, age 45. She's actually a personal trainer and she's very fit and very trim. She's got a history of depression and she, and anxiety, I should put and anxiety on that, and she's on medications for depression and anxiety as well. So as we look at her eyes, you're already knowing some things that you're looking at, right? You're seeing the brown spots. And you know that means you need to ask about liver. So you're going to ask about any history of liver issues, and then you're going to go into the emotional liver, anger, bitterness, resentment. Does she have problems digesting? Fatty foods would be a, a physical symptom. So do fatty foods upset her system, uh, skin issues, all that kind of stuff, the depression, asking all of that. And again, we're going to go back to the very same recommendations, some of them that we've made, but we're going to throw in some new ones. Leafy greens, we know that. We've talked about that at length. I also will often recommend doing either helichrysum or lemon essential oils as a, an abdominal massage right over that liver. Okay, very helpful for the liver. Very helpful indeed. And so, you know, if you've got some essential oil background, we can pull some of that in for you too. Then we want to look at the cholerat. Now, just by show of hands, how many of you maybe have some Jensen iridology under your belt already? Let's have you raise your hand if you do. Okay. 
that actually makes my job a little easier. Good, okay. Not having to teach you two languages here. This line that comes around here is called the cholerat. It correlates to two key things. The first one is the tone of the intestinal tract. And the second is the temperament. So I want you to think for a minute, if you've ever read the comics in the newspaper, for instance, or if you read comic books as a kid, when anyone goes kapow, there's one of those big starburst things and it's that energy kapow, right? That's what we're looking at here. When we see a cholerat that has points on it like this, that's a kapow cholerat. And it means that this person emotionally goes boom, boom, retract, right? So we get these explosions that are usually anger. excuse me, that one of those kapows tickled my throat and now I'm having a hard time getting rid of it. Oh my goodness. <coughs> How human can I be? All right, so we won't kapow like that ever again, I don't think. Um, so this is, again, the explosion and the retraction. The explosion and the retraction. So that's the emotional side. A little bit prone to outburst and then I'm okay now outburst, I'm okay. On the bowel level, it suggests areas where the bowel may be ballooned and then comes down tighter. Where we have the ballooning or the points or areas that are popping out like this, those areas are prone to cramping because the, the intestinal tract, whether it's the intestine, the small intestines or large, has an expanded area. And in order to move the food stuff through it, that area has to cramp down further to keep the peristalsis going. So we need to ask her about her temperament. Are her moods, um, do, do her moods have fairly sudden up and downs? And the, she, she does. She can really get into anxiety and depression very quickly. And so she'll be beep bopping along just fine and all of a sudden just poof, and the bottom drops out of her world. So suggested for her or possible suggestions to the Neurovine herbs. Again, I love the Nature Sunshine STRJ. I think in this test, you put, in the US, you call it Stress J. Or eight, Formula 8. I love the B vitamins. Vitamin D. We've learned so much lately about vitamin D and its impact as a neurotransmitter. Tons of research into the fact that vitamin D functions as an antidepressant for a lot of people. Right. And we need to take care of the bowel. And her bowel is actually what brought her in more than the anxiety. But they are linked like this. And so we have to address them together. So knowing that she's got this volatile up and down thing, what kinds of things would you suggest would be on your list to consider? Let's have you type them in. Oh, Elizabeth, good suggestions. Well done. And keep typing. If you're still typing, keep typing. Probiotics and digestive enzymes, yeah, for that gut. Yoga and meditation for the moods and the even her out that way, yeah. I love both all of those suggestions. I love the probiotics because, of course, we now know that so much of our brain is actually in our gut, right? And that if the gut flora, if the gut biome is not healthy, the brain and the way we process things is not going to be healthy either. So to do the probiotics, the enzymes, and get some yoga or meditation in, brilliant. And actually, this, this woman does do yoga, probably not a, enough. Can be candida linked, absolutely. You're right on, Elizabeth, absolutely. We see that a lot, that, um, that we see the moods, especially the ups and the downs, as related to candida. And so we'll often approach it from that direction as well. Well done. And then 
Right. And then we see an eye like this, for instance, we're not going to do a full blown case study on this one, but this is a female age 20. We haven't seen an eye like this one yet today. She's got all of these flower petals in here. All of these, we call them loop de loops or flower petals or lacuna. Lacuna is the real word for them. And so when we understand this client, even if we're, you know, a few feet away, we can see the eyes fairly clearly. We can see all of these lacuna in there. And what we're going to actually be able to do is, as we're shaking her hand and welcoming her, welcoming her into the office, we're already starting to make the assessment, the list of questions we want to ask. Because from here, we, we see she's got blue eyes. That tells us about her chemistry. We see she's got flower petals in her eyes or a lacuna. That tells us that she's prone to hormonal imbalances, especially pancreatic, thyroid, and adrenal. We see that she's got a lot of white in her eyes. That tells us about her chemistry. We see that she's got this slightly different colored ring at the center of her eye, which tells us about her stomach as a digestive organ. We, we probably can't see the lay of the fibers from two or three feet away, but we can see that she's got this blood vessel here. And this is teaching us things that are very active in her body where this, where the iris is genetic, the sclera is what's active, what's current. So we've hit so many key issues. We haven't even started asking her questions. We haven't even asked her what her concerns are, but we already have a list forming in our head of where we want to go. And what that means is that as she's telling us what her concerns are, we can be, begin refining that list that we came up with even more effectively. I'm just going to ask you again to mark it in your schedule to join me again. We're not done yet. We've still got case studies to do. To mark it in your schedule to join me again in two weeks for another case study and for, or rather, we're going to be doing stomach markers that day, stomach markers, and uh, we'll be, be opening early bird registration. Now, the course is called Confident Nutritionist. So if you're a herbalist or if you have other training, don't feel like I'm only going to be doing nutrition. You've seen how we integrate lifestyle. You've seen how we integrate herbs as well. And so we're not going to leave you out at all. We really do uh, work to make this something that every student is going to get tons of benefit from. This is what one of my students has said. Judah's teaching is professional and easy to learn as she stops for questions, has great slides, and reviews every week. Her students are her priority and their understanding of the information is imperative to her. There's a student website page with all the PDFs for downloading and videos to watch. The page is so easily accessible. It is a one of a kind of course that is so challenging of your skills and exciting to see what's next every week. There's also a private Facebook page for questions, comments, assessments, and just keeping in touch between weeks. I would definitely recommend this course to anyone who's even thinking of taking an iridology course. Judith is a wealth of knowledge and a fantastic mentor. I love this course and I know you will too. She's just, uh, she was one of my first students through a couple of years ago. Michelle Davies says, I'm a graduate of the Institute of Holistic Nutrition in 2005 as a certified nutritional practitioner and I'm registered with the International Organization of Nutritional Consultants as a registered nutritional consulting practitioner. And I have a variety of other nutrition-based certificates with herbal medicine, endocrinology, detoxification the right way, and mental health. I've studied iridology, so she came to me as already certified from David J. Pesek. She did one, two, and three with him, uh, in, and that's in his program. Not all programs have the same divisions. And she also did iridology and professional practice with Darko Purse in 2012. This is what she says about it. This is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Wow, what a compliment. Judith's course is top on my list. Judith is very enthusiastic and excited as we are in the course. And she has many good examples and stories to share that make the course that much more real in today's world. She's actually just finished her certification just um, a month or so ago. And she says, yes, so amazing to become certified. It was a great journey through Judith's classes and extended webinar tutoring. Her faith and her personal care really made the difference and encouraged me to, to the finish line. But it doesn't end here. I get emotional, I get too involved. Oh my goodness. 
she, she's much more confident. She's starting her practice and yeah, she's just doing so well. Karen Choate says, thank you, Judith. It's been a pleasure studying under you. Karen is actually just preparing to do her final IPA exam. The IPA exam is three parts. She's finished the first two. She uh, should be doing her final written exam this week, I believe. It has been such a pleasure studying under you and learning from you. I really miss our classes, but I'm looking forward to completing this component of iridology and continuing my education, most hopefully with you. I have become much more comfortable with taking photos of my patients, and I've begun to implement this incredible work in my practice quite successfully. It truly has helped immensely in my decisions and assessments. Thank you for sharing your skill, your knowledge, and your patience, Karen Choate. So she came to me well-trained as a CNHP and added the iridology. So what's included in the course? It's 20 sessions that are live webinars just like this one. Each webinar is about two, two hours long. Each class is recorded in its entirety and posted on the student website for you to listen to and review as often as you want. We also have all of the content edited into short topics. So these are little videos that are literally anywhere from one minute to five minutes long, teaching individual topics so that you can go back and just review that one topic if you need it. These again are stored on your site for access for 18 months. But what happens at 18 months? At 18 months, rather than me um, having to maintain a whole bunch of millions of student sites, what happens is at the end of 18 months, you're migrated to an alumni site where um, you've got all the same content, but I just have to maintain that one site for all my students who have finished the, the program. We have a digital textbook that you download in weekly installments, full color, totally labeled, it's beautiful. Each class starts with a review of the previous week. So we need to make sure you're really solid on everything before we add to it. Each week has lots of in-class practice and interaction. So unlike today where your, your lines, your microphones are muted, when we're in class, I unmute your mics and if you've got background noise, you mute them yourself but I like to have a lot of give and take, a lot of questions, a lot of discussion in our classes to make sure that you're really super solid. You get a certificate of attendance for attending 80% of the classes live. And let's look at another eyeball. Again, we're not gonna do a full analysis on this one. When we look at this eye, we know it's lymphatic. That tells us a lot about chemistry. We see we've got a few flower petals, which tells us that there may be a predisposition to some type of hormonal imbalance. We look in here, we're going to ask questions about the stomach. We look at these colors out here. We're going to ask questions, especially about gallbladder and kidney because of these colors. We've got the browns out here, so we want to ask about liver. We see all of these blood vessels out here, this one especially, that if her eye was open wider, we would see that it actually goes all the way around down to here. Congestion in the circulatory system throughout her whole body. This is an older client. And um, again, it's iridology and sclerology together teach us so much. And then we can use that, of course, to our client's benefit. Sometimes, and I'm, our first case today was a hematogenic eye, we, depending on who you are, where you live, what kind of people you attract into your practice, you might see a lot of hematogenic eyes. Where I live, I don't get very many of these. So when I see a hematogenic eye, even if it's just someone coming to visit us, I grab them and drag them into my office and take photos of their eyes just so I've got more hema eyes. A lot of people think you can't see anything in a hema eye. There is a ton of information here. So again, here we're looking at stomach lining. The, the things that refer to stomach lining. We're looking at digestion in general. We're looking at intestinal tract, nervous system. And then each of these markings out here is telling us uh, questions to ask about different organs. We even have some pigment here. Dark brown pigment in a brown eye, double whammy on that liver. And we've got contraction furrows. We've got a purple haze hanging off the edge of the eye. Right. So we've got lots. This eye is telling us volumes, volumes. This eye has many um, things as well. A little bit of stomach lining stuff. The collarette is a little harder to see. We've got some things that are telling us about nervous system and nervous system. 
Then we look at this and it says, oh, prone to allergies. Hmm, interesting. Bit of um, a lipid, a blood lipid imbalance that's been going on for a while and is not going to disappear from our eyes now. We've got all these blood vessels in the sides that are telling us about different congestion. So it's all pointing us towards questions we should ask to help us know how to uh, help this client. This is our, I believe, our last case study. Yes, it is. Woohoo! Let's do it. Female age 34. Her history is she's had episodes, she, she really struggles with extreme, extreme anxiety, and for a few years it was debilitating and crippling to the point where um, there was just, she just, she couldn't function. It was horrible. She also had, has PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you're familiar with that, have you raise your hand? Okay. All right, so we maybe need a little information, but some of you are familiar. Okay, great, thank you. We'll touch on it a little bit. And she's on a prescription that is anti-anxiety. Very, very low dose, now she's doing very well really, really pleased with her progress. So um, first thing we look at is we've got the contraction for us. Remember, we've talked about these with every eye so far, right? These are, you'll see them in a lot of eyes. And for some people, they mean nothing because the person is doing the right kinds of things with their daily lifestyle to help them keep anxiety and stress at bay. This client, when we first met, was not doing that. She was a, she was really a mess. She really was. And we had to do a lot of work because when she would get under any stress, she would just shut down, could not function at all. There was no resiliency, no reserve, none whatsoever. And so um, we, we really had to start working with her. And her shutdown was coming largely Yes, some neurological stuff, but also from the PCOS. So PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, which if you've worked with it, you know that what it means is it's part of syndrome X linked very, very closely and includes uh, insulin resistance leading into type 2 diabetes. What happens when a woman has polycystic ovarian syndrome, and I suspect the male counterpart of this is low sperm count. But that's just my suspicion. I'm, as I do a lot of work with infertility, I'm doing a little more research with my, my clients on that. And, you know, as a man comes in with a low sperm count, um, and I look at his eyes, and I see things that would be markers that would be polycystic ovarian syndrome in a woman, I'm treating him the same way as I would treat a woman, and we're seeing some results with it. So it's very cool. But with PCOS, because this person is insulin resistant, usually because they're, uh, they have that tendency, but then they're eating a high carbohydrate diet. That throws the insulin levels way up. They get too much insulin circulating in the body, but the insulin cannot get into the cells to help the body break down the sugars. So as the insulin goes up, the sex hormone, hormone binding globulin goes down, which allows testosterone to go up, which totally messes up fertility. Totally. So the doctor's typically will throw Clomid at this as if that's going to fix anything. They almost never talk about diet, or if they do, they send the patient to a dietitian who tells them, oh, no, it's okay to drink juice. That's good for you. Or, you know, things like that that just make me go, oh, really? So when I started working with this client, knowing she had some fertility issues and knowing she had anxiety and knowing she wanted to get pregnant, motivated, over the top motivated. I went in hard and heavy. I would not normally do this, but we gave her instructions of how to clean up her diet. She had, before she met me, put on roughly 50 pounds, 50 to 60 pounds in a matter of a year, which is a huge indication that, um, that she was PCOS, okay, and that she had insulin resistance. So I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to talk about this first. What did we do with her diet? What did we do with her diet? More leafy greens. We eliminated the refined carbs. And I mean eliminated. Like, don't let that ever cross your lips again. 
and got the leafy greens up. As we did that and got her to start walking and exercising, lifting weights and things like that for an hour a day, she was motivated. She wanted a baby out of this deal. She did not deviate from the program one iota. We saw her periods that had become so messed up, really long and unpredictable, settle into a beautiful 28 to 30 day routine. We saw a beautiful follicular phase, a beautiful luteal phase, really clear ovulation, totally fertile. Being PCOS, as I suspected, and she actually did go to a doctor who said, I think you've got PCOS. And he determined that by measuring her waistline. That was the first thing. If a woman has a waist bigger than 36 inches, she's probably insulin resistant. And that means she's probably PCOS. Okay, for a man, it would be 40 inches. And so the doctor said that, then run the blood tests and, and prove that, yeah, this is PCOS. PCOS almost always has the MTHFR defect. That's the methyl tetrahydrofolate defect, which means that their bodies cannot take a B vitamin from a tablet and methylate it properly in the liver so that they have the activated form of the B complex available now. They can take the leafy greens, which contain a lot, that contain the pre-methylated, the properly organically naturally methylated bees. They can work with that just fine. But a B vitamin tablet, totally different story. So we had to make sure she was getting methylated bees, which have really come on board in the last few years. There's lots of those available, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. When we put her on this program of protein and lots of veggies, especially lots of leafy green veggies, and we got rid of the refined carbs, she lost 60 pounds in four months. We literally just watched her disappear till she got down to an ideal weight. It was so amazing. And she wasn't hungry because she could eat as much as she wanted of the protein and the leafy greens and the low carb veggies. She loved it. She just loved it. And it, it made her, returned her fertility. She's had, since had four beautiful babies, healthy pregnancies, all is good. She certified as a personal trainer. She keeps her diet really clean and she's doing so, so well. So let's look at this a little bit more. She has a jagged collarette, which again is temperament. And yes, she's got a bit of a flashpoint temper and then she retracts quickly. So that's interesting. And knowing that then, um, we, again, we needed to work with her B vitamins because we needed to make sure that she was getting B vitamins that her nervous system could, nervous system could handle to keep her on that even keel. We also note that she has a bump out into one pancreas area, two pancreas areas, and three pancreas areas, and that, again, tells us high risk of insulin resistance. So we needed to work with that strongly with her diet to get that working properly. With that jagged colorette again, same questions. How's your temperament? How's your gut? We added the Nervine herbs, the B vitamins, vitamin D. And, of course, now that she's eating so many vegetables, so much leafy greens, so much fiber, and it's so good for her. Her bowel is not an issue. Her bowel is just fine. Two bowel movements a day as if it was clockwork, and she is in a sweet spot, right, and feeling great. In her personal training certification, she actually certified as an obstacle, obstacle course coach. So when you go and you, you can either just do a regular boot camp or she can just show you how to lift weights, but she really loves training people for obstacle course races, which is just really intense, really intense. So one of the things that I recommend for these people that have this anxiety and depression stuff, we, all, of this, all the things that we've talked about already are awesome. They are really, really fabulous. I will often add to it, um, if they're open to it, a spiritual element and encourage them to incorporate prayer with their meditation. And if they're not comfortable going there, or if I think they need a little help getting there, they would go there, but they're just, you know, they're feeling a little disconnected spiritually. I will take them into emotional freedom technique. 
and I will teach them how to EFT so that if they fall into an anxiety or depressive or I can't let go of this anger situation, they can go back to their EFT and they can work through that energy and flush it out of their system and help them uh, to find their balance, find get their feet under them again and feel centered and really balanced and grounded with that. Are you familiar with essential freedom technique? If you are, raise your hand. Some people call it tapping. Okay, awesome, uh, one of you, okay. Fabulous. Well, good. So that might be something for me to maybe generate a class on, a little workshop on. That would be fun. That would be fun. Tapping is a lot of fun. So why would you want to study with me? Well, I've been where you are. Remember, I've been where you are. I've uh, I've understand the financial and time constraints of running a business, taking care of a family. Remember, I built my business while having and raising seven children. I get busy. I know what busy is. Now that my kids are mostly grown and gone, my parents are aging and they they have needs that I need to be fulfilling for them as well. So I totally get it. We've got those important commitments and we can't always just drop everything and go and do a course for a week or two to get certified in it. Right? Sometimes we just don't have that. I understand learning needs. We all don't learn in the same way. And as one of my students said earlier, I'm patient. When a student says, I don't get it. I figure out another way to go over it. I find more examples. I find different uh, different ways to explain it because it's important that my students learn everything that they need to learn. I understand that there's a lot to learn about iridology and sclerology, and it can be overwhelming. So I've got lots of different learning tools in place for you so that you can break it down into bite-sized pieces. Come to class and then review during the week as you need to. And when we open the the registration i charge in canadian dollars so if you're living in canada you're going whoa i don't have to pay 30 percent more because it's in us and if you're in the states you're going really my credit card's going to process 30 percent cheaper than that what a deal right so that's important to remember is that um i charge in canadian i've had so many people say i should charge in american but people really like that i charge in canadian why would you want to consider doing there's two tracks in my course and that doesn't it's not the right way to say it everyone gets the same curriculum and the same attention but there will be two options open to you one where you do not certify the tuition is a little bit lower for that because at the end of the course you're not going to demand one-on-one -on -one attention and the second track is to certify so if you want to certify you choose that other track and um, that would be the group that wants to be IPA certified, right? If you start in the not certifying track and you change your mind, you can buy the certification package separately as an add-on. So you don't have to think, oh my goodness, I missed the boat. I'll never do it now. Not true. We've got that covered too. But if you've chosen certification, why would you want to do that? Well, to have a professional and internationally recognized affiliation. That's important, right? Birth of a feather flock together. To have opportunities to keep up to date on the latest iridology research. Yeah, iridology changes. What we teach now is night and day different from what I learned 30 years ago. I've had to let go of and relearn new stuff as new research comes out. And I'm excited about that because I want the newest and the latest and I want that for my students. We'd, you want to certify to be a part of a worldwide movement. We are trying ultimately to get iridology recognized by healthcare systems worldwide. And it's coming. You know, the Philippines has had it recognized by their government, which is amazing. To demonstrate to your clients that you have been properly trained in the most current, valid, and accurate IRS assessment and techniques available. It's all about knowing the latest and having the best. The benefits, no more unpaid homework time for you. That's a good one, right? Give you an extra two or three hours for every client per week that you could use for more clients, that you could use for your own study, that you could use for a hobby, that you could use for your family. You'll be able to create your, create your therapeutic sequences in your sessions and keep your client, clients being more successful. Tongue tied suddenly. Help your clients to be more successful and keep them coming back to continue their wellness journey. You can get rid of those lengthy intake questionnaires. 
and you'll be able to develop rapport in minutes because you are talking to your client, talking with your client, being present with your client, and you'll be more precise in your client work. So as you get ready for that, join me again on April 3rd where we will study stomach markers in the eyes. Again, you've got a choice of an 11 a.m. session or a 6 p.m. And this is the short link to join me for that webinar. I thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope that you will copy this down and get registered right away to join me in a couple of weeks for stomach markers and for opening of registration. Have a good day and we'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.